Perry Mason, brought to you by Tide. T-I-D-E, Tide. Procter and Gamble's new wash day miracle. Perry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, dramatized by Irving Bendig. Perry Mason, defender of human rights, champion of all those who seek justice. There's some pretty wonderful new soaps. I know it. And some absolutely sensational new sudsing products. I know that too, Bob. But I also know that Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. Yes, and I know it too, Franny. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. That's because Procter & Gamble's Tide not only leaves clothes free from dirt, it removes dingy soap film too. Yet, with all this extraordinary cleaning power, Tide is safe. Truly safe for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens soap-dulled colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets sheets, pillowcases, and towels whiter than any other washing product known. Keeps them white, too, week after week. Never turns them yellow. And all this goes for your whole family wash, too. So when you choose a washing product, remember this. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. Tide dirt out, T-I-D-E, Tide. Think how you'd feel if you were in Martha Smith's shoes. Can you imagine what it must be like to sit in a courtroom while one witness after another, honest witnesses too, give testimony, honest testimony, which makes you appear to be a murderess? Can you imagine what it must be like? Is it any wonder Martha's face is taut and sprained, and she looks as if she were close to the breaking point? We're going back to the courtroom in just a moment, going to watch and listen as Perry Mason fights to keep things from being too bad for his clients. But first, let's join the real murderer of Wilfred Palmer. Let's join Allie Whitlock, the woman who should be sitting in Martha Smith's place. Right now, Allie gets out of a taxi in front of the criminal court building. Says... Do we go right into Judge Newman's courtroom, Officer Maple? No, Miss Whitlock. No? Not till Mr. Noble's ready for you to give your testimony. Yeah, oh. let me get the door for you. Oh, I thought I could go right into the courtroom. The witnesses are usually allowed in the courtroom only while they're giving their testimony. Wouldn't want them influenced. There's so little I know about the law. Lucky you. Except one thing. What's that? Uh, we turn left here. I shouldn't like to tangle with it. Oh, we're not so bad. I bet you'd be really mean to me if I murdered anyone. I couldn't be mean to you. Not even if I were a murderer. Are you? If I were, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> if I were and I were caught, as Martha Smith appears to be caught, do you know what I think I'd do, Officer Maple? What? I don't think I'd fight. I think I'd give up, throw myself upon the mercy of the court. Uh, isn't that the way they put it? Uh, that's the way they put it. You think the court would show me much mercy, Officer Maple? If I were the court, you know what I'd do to you, Miss Whitlock? What? I... Here's the witness room. We go right in here. Now, why did Alan Whitlock say such a thing? What can be in her mind? Could she have for one fleeting moment the fear that when she faces Perry Mason... He'll learn her guilty secret? Or was this just another thrill? Meanwhile, inside the courtroom itself at the defense table, we hear... Here, here's the water, Chief. 
Thank you, Donald. May I have it, Mr. Mason? Hmm? May I give it to Martha? Oh, yes, of course, Donald. Here, darling. Donald? No, 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 darling. Donald, what I've done to you. Drink your water, darling. What I've done to you. Try to pull yourself together. Do you know what the prosecutor is going to try to do now? Uh, please drink this water. No, Mr. Mason told me he's, he's going to try to prove that you helped me plan Wilfred's murder. He's already tried. Mr. Mason did not let him get very far, though. I'll take a sip of this water. Mm, oh. Thank you. Love me? Oh, so much, Donald. That's why I do. Shh, darling. Darling. The day's almost over. Tomorrow won't be any better. You mustn't believe that. You must know tomorrow will be better. No. And it will. Tomorrow will be just as good for us as today's been bad. Tomorrow, Mr. Mason will start our defense. How can there be any defense against Shh, what they... Darling. They want to see us dead, Donald. They want to put us both in the electric chair. Oh, my darling, what I've done to... Now, darling, that isn't so. You'll learn it isn't so. Ready to proceed, Mr. Mason? Yes, I think so, Your Honor. In my client's name, thank you for the recess. Mr. Noble, Mr. Bissell. John Bissell, take the stand, please. You can't believe anything. Who is this? The Justice of Peace who married us. Oh, well, leave him to me. You're an active Justice of the Peace, Mr. Bissell. Uh, I have my place right on the main highway, just over the state line. And you uh, uh, can't miss it, Mr. Noble. It's homey. Uh, couples come to me from all over. Oh, then you perform marriages? Many of them? Oh, hundreds. Uh, hundreds of happy... Uh, happy. <laughs> now, Mr. Bissell, have you ever performed a marriage ceremony for anyone in this room? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, those two. When did you marry them, Mr. Bissell? Why, uh, that's a matter of record, Mr. Noble. But when? Uh, the night of the murder. You mean the murder of Wilfred Palmer? Uh, yes, Remember the time? Why, uh, that's a matter of record, too. Uh, I think it was uh, just after midnight. Ah. So you married Martha and Donald Smith about five hours after they... That is, after Palmer was murdered. Uh, I did. How long would it take to drive from the city to your uh, your place? Uh, three and one half hours, if they're in a hurry. Uh, average about four and a good road all the way. I see. Now, you remember this couple distinctly. Oh, yes, yes. Any particular reason? Well, they, they, they were so very nervous. That's all, Mr. Bissell. Your witness, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Now, Mr. Bissell, you say you've performed hundreds of marriages? Uh, every year, sir. Uh, literally hundreds of marriages, yes. So you've had a chance to observe many couples about to be married? Uh, thousands. And you said Martha and Donald Smith were nervous? Uh, very nervous. Mr. Bissell, let me ask you. How do marrying couples usually act? Uh, uh, <laughs> nervous. And this couple was nervous? Y yes, but... That's uh, all. Uh, One moment, Mr. Bessel. Uh, yes. Did this couple act the way most couples about to get married act? Come now, there's no need to be frightened. Uh, oh, uh, yes, that's it. Uh, they acted frightened. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Bissell. Yes. You now say Martha and Donald Smith acted frightened. Uh, yes, well, I, I remember saying to Mrs. Bissell, uh, she was a witness, uh, I'll just bet there's something wrong with those two. Oh. Well, that's different. Then. You noticed there was something wrong with them. I sure did. Uh, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. I had an idea that they were criminals or something. You're an right. Be quiet, Mr. Noble. He's your witness. But you're... You started this. Well, sit down. Go on, Mr. Mason. So, Mr. Bissell, you, you thought there was something wrong with this couple. I said so. And why didn't you report them to the police? Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the laws of your state, as I'm sure you are. Uh, yes. Then you must know the penalty for performing a wedding ceremony when you're suspicious of the couple. But I didn't know. You're that excused, I, Mr. Bissell. I'd like to explain. You're excused. These... Get off the stand. Go on. I'd like to... If you don't mind, Mr. Noble... I'd like to say something at this point. Now, come here, Mr. Mason. I'd like you to hear it, too. Yes, sir. This court has always felt that the primary purpose of a trial is for the presentation of evidence. There are statutes based on good common sense governing the presentation of that evidence. 
You gentlemen know the rules as well as I. And Mr. Noble. Your Honor, I Mr. Have Noble, tried. in your eagerness to win this case, you are straining at those rules. I will not warn you again. As for you, Mr. Mason, when it's your turn to present evidence, please remember what I've said applies to you as well. This court will do its best to be just and fair. We'll also conduct this trial in an orderly fashion. You may proceed. As it's getting late in the afternoon, if you'd like to adjourn until tomorrow, Mr. Noble. The state is near the end of its presentation, Your Honor. I believe we can finish it this afternoon. All right, then. Call your next witness. I'd like Lieutenant Tragg back on the stand again, but it will take a moment to get him in. All right, get him. He'll recess for five minutes. Perry. Yes? I just phoned Paul at the clinic. And? He has a dozen men out checking good leads. Fine. You don't want to save trouble and expense by getting the woman's name out of Martha, do you? Well, if I try again, it'll just make her more stubborn. I'm going to do my best to make her come to me. I think I'll make everyone come to me. What does that mean? Oh, Noble's getting ready to wheel up his mystery witness. Oh. Might have to trag. He said he'd finish this afternoon. So? So that means he thinks he's got us licked. He's going to try and wind up in a hurry. Take all the fight out of me. I don't get it, Chief. I'm going to let him do it. What? I'm going to let him take all the fight out of me. I'm going to let Noble come to me, Della. Give him enough rope to trip himself. Give him enough rope to pull that name out of Martha in spite of herself. You hope. About Martha, yes. About Noble, I know. I'm going to let him build his case so high he'll splatter when it falls. Watch. found one weak point in Noble's character, overconfidence, and he's banking on that overconfidence to overbalance Noble. However, Mason's in for a shock tomorrow when Alan Whitlock takes the stand. Be sure to be with us. I'm in the dirt of T-I-D-E-Tide. With so many really good washing products being used, a woman has to be given a mighty good reason before she'll switch to a new one. Well, we think we can give you the best reason in the world for changing to Tide. Listen, Procter & Gamble's Tide will get your clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. Tide leaves clothes free from dirt and more. Tide removes dingy soap film, too. Yet, with all this amazing cleaning power, Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dull colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets white things whiter than any other washing product known. So try Tide. Watch those suds billow up. Notice how different they look and feel. And see your family wash at its cleanest best. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. T-I-D-E, Tide. Harry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, is brought to you by Tide, Procter and Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Try Tide yourself, and you too will agree you've never used anything like it. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Harry Mason, brought to you by Tide. T-I-D-E, Tide. Procter and Gamble's new wash day miracle. Harry Mason. The famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, dramatized by Irving Bendig. Harry Mason, defender of human rights, champion of all those who seek justice. Oh, 
can't any soap. Oh, hold on now, Franny. There are some pretty wonderful new soaps. I know it. And some absolutely sensational new sudsing products. I know that too, Bob. But I also know that Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. Yes, and I know it too, Franny. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. That's because Procter & Gamble's Tide not only leaves clothes free from dirt, it removes dingy soap film too. Yet, with all this extraordinary cleaning power, Tide is safe, truly safe, for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens soap-dulled colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets sheets, pillowcases, and towels whiter than any other washing product known. Keeps them white, too, week after week. Never turns them yellow. And all this goes for your whole family wash, too. So, when you choose a washing product, remember this. No soap. No other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. Tide in, dirt out, T-I-D, Tide. We're back in Judge Newman's court. Outside, the early winter twilight is setting. At the defense table, a man and a woman sit close, their heads together. Martha and Donald Smith, accused of the murder of Wilfred Palmer. Paying no attention to the spectators who watch them so hungrily, Donald puts his arm around his wife, whispers, Darling. Oh, Donald. Don't act so trapped. Look how I feel, darling. Don't. I feel so strangely. I can hardly breathe. But you must. I can't stand much more of this. Those eyes boring into my back, those voices, those awful Martha, people. Of course, almost over for today. You'll be fine after another night's sleep. I'll never sleep again. I never want to sleep again. Or if I do, I hope I never wake up. Oh, no, I don't mean that. Though. I know. I want to wake. I want to live. I want to be with you. You will be. You will be, darling. Just just leave it to Mr. Mason. I will, but... And after this is all over, we'll have our honeymoon. A real honeymoon. I don't think so, Donald. Do you really think so? Of course I do. Now, give me a kiss. Here? Right here. In front of Judge Newman, Prosecutor Noble, and everybody. And at the other end of the defense table, we hear... 405, Chief. What, Bella? It's after four. <laughs> Think Noble will be able to wind up his prosecution this afternoon? Well, he said he would. I guess he will, too, if he gets track in here. That Donald is being a good boy, isn't he, Donald? Mm-hmm. Look at him. The other end of the table with Martha there. No, they're sweet. Yes. They don't deserve this. It's almost time for the mystery witness, isn't it? Yes, I imagine. After Trag. After Noble introduces Martha's glove. Then now he wheels up the big guns. Yes, now he wheels up the big guns. Yes, Lieutenant Trag, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Noble. Let's proceed. I'll take over with Trag, Bella. See what they can do to spike those big guns. Take the stand, Lieutenant. Yes. You've already been sworn. Yes, sir. Now, Lieutenant, I show you this object. Will you tell us what it is and if you've ever seen it before? It's a woman's glove. And? The first time I saw it, it was handed to me by Detective Levinsky. You have a sworn statement by Detective Levinsky? Right here. Please tell the court about it. The glove was found by Levinsky on the service stairs during our investigation on the night of the murder. Where, Lieutenant? On the service stairs, right off the landing where Palmer's apartment was. And this is the same glove? I put a tag on it. Levinsky signed the tag here. I signed it blown here. The date and time it was found. I see. Now, Lieutenant, there's a stain on the glove. That's right. You had the stain analyzed? I did. And what made the stain? Blood. Human blood. Oh, but I explained that. I explained that I cut my finger. Miss, 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 sit down. Sit down. Oh, don't you see it there? Oh. Go on, Mr. Noble. You have a statement from a laboratory chemist, Lieutenant Tragg? I mean, to the effect that the stain is human blood? I do. So this blood-stained glove was found on the stairway leading to the floor on which Palmer's apartment was located. Well... Yes, of course, but... You tried to find the owner of the glove? Yes. Were you successful? Yes. Will you tell the court how you did ascertain ownership of the glove? Just a moment. Your Honor, we admit ownership of this glove. I object to further testimony on that point on the grounds that such testimony is immaterial and irrelevant. Sustained. 
Well, Trag, you determined who owned the glove. Yes. Then what did you do? Started looking for Martha Smith. We found her registered in a small hotel. Under what circumstances, Trag? She was with her husband, her lawyer, Perry Mason, and his secretary, Miss Street. And what were they about to do? Objection. How would Lieutenant Trag know what we were about to do? The same. What were these people doing when you found them, Lieutenant? Talking. The door was open. Go on. Miss Street and Mrs. Smith had traded coats. <laughs> traded coats? Miss Street had on Martha's coat, a tan one, and Mrs. Smith was wearing Miss Street's, a blue one. <laughs> but they weren't trying to get away or anything. That's enough. Go witness, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Now, Lieutenant Trag. Yes, sir. You say Mrs. Smith's glove was found on the stairs leading to the floor of Palmer's apartment? Well, that's true, but... Isn't it a fact that those stairs connect with all floors of the building? They sure do. So it's impossible to say where whoever dropped that glove had been or was going. That's right, Mr. Mason. Now to get on, Lieutenant. You have a report from the chemist who analyzed the stain on that glove? It was blood, human blood, Mr. Mason. Was the blood tight? Why, no. The chemist didn't determine the blood type? He couldn't. But he did manage to make out it was human blood. That's right. But since it couldn't be tight, there's no way of telling whose blood it was. Am I right? Absolutely. It could have been anyone's. Now, Lieutenant Trag, you say Martha Smith disappeared after the murder. That's right. Uh, We couldn't find her for a couple of days. Now, let me ask you this. Was there a warrant issued for her arrest when she disappeared? Why, no. Did the newspapers know you were looking for Martha Smith and publish that fact? They did not. Then, as a matter of fact, there was no way in which Martha Smith could have learned the authorities were looking for her. No. Further, as far as you know, her disappearance might well have been natural and legal. Yes. And when you found her, with her husband, Miss Street, and myself. Did she make any attempt to escape? Uh, she traded coats. Ah, yes. She had traded coats. And you thought that significant? I did. Especially since Mrs. Smith's coat was tan. Well, we got reports there was a woman in a tan coat outside Palmer's apartment. Uh, the what? important tan coat? Yes. The one you searched for so thoroughly in Palmer's building. You did search for the tan coat, didn't you? Well... No. So, you found this girl who had no way of knowing you were searching for her. You found her in the company of her husband and her lawyer. And because she was not wearing a tan coat, you arrested her? Uh, uh, look here, Mason. I had the glove. And that, that coat. Just... Oh, then you'd have arrested her anyway, with or without the tan coat. Well, sure. Then the tan coat can't be so important. But it is. I mean... Just because she wasn't wearing it, I... Oh, oh, I wish I'd never heard of a tan coat. I can see why. That's all, Lieutenant Frank. Next witness, please. (laughs) Well, that's that, baggage. Now we get down to it. Miss Helen Whitlock, take the stand, please. Helen Whitlock? Yes, I heard. What interest could Alan Whitlock have in a case like this? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Now, where do you live, Miss Whitlock? 363 Lincoln. The building in which the uh, murder was committed. Oh, yes. Yes, I think you were in the deceased's apartment when the police arrived. I was. I was startled by a scream. I went to help Mrs. Powers. She's the building manager. Now, try and put that terrible scene from your mind, Miss Whitlock. I'll try. And tell us, did you know the murdered man... Well, not really. But you'd seen him. Well, we lived on the same floor. I understand. Now, I ask you, Miss Whitlock, I ask you if you know the defendant, Martha Smith. Well, I don't know her. But you've seen her before. (laughs) Yes. Please, please speak up, Miss Whitlock. No matter how painful it may be, I shall have to ask you where you saw her before. I... Well, the last time... In a police lineup. I see. You identified her in a police lineup, Miss Whitlock. I did. And how could you identify her, Miss Whitlock? 
That you'd seen her previously? I had. Miss Whitlock, I ask you, where did you see Martha Smith before? I... Speak up, Miss Whitlock. All right, I'll tell you. I saw her coming out of Wilfred Palmer's apartment about two minutes after he was murdered. That's where I saw her. That's where I saw her. Come on, come on. Your witness... It's a lie, it's me. that puts Martha right on the scene immediately after the murder was committed. But, Perry Mason, if you go after Alan Whitlock too hard, if you begin to shake her story, you yourself, Perry, are going to be in jeopardy, as we shall learn. Join us Monday, friends, won't you? really good washing products being used, a woman has to be given a mighty good reason before she'll switch to a new one. Well, we think we can give you the best reason in the world for changing to Tide. Listen, Procter & Gamble's Tide will get your clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. Tide leaves clothes free from dirt and more. Tide removes dingy soap film, too. Yet, with all this amazing cleaning power... Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dull colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets white things whiter than any other washing product known. So try Tide. Watch those suds billow up. Notice how different they look and feel. And see your family wash at its cleanest best. No soap. No other suds. No other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. T-I-D-E, Tide. Harry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, is brought to you by Tide. Procter and Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Try Tide yourself, and you too will agree you've never used anything like it. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>